The screen panel, please welcome Matthew Lillard and Skeet Ulrich. Get it up, here they come. All right. Hey, wow. Thank you guys, please sit down, sit down. Thank you so much. I don't know what happened to Matt. Yeah. Like, where, where is him he? something in his drink and <laughs> is he laying down back there still let me let me look and see all right I, i'm sorry about that i shouldn't have done that but no he's not no out there. he's not there think oh, he well. might be in the bathroom i'll, I'll take any questions matt related <laughs> <laughs> so raise your hand we'll come around with the microphone let's get this going how yep. is everybody <laughs> great yeah, you guys are alive. It's a great crowd. Happy to see you. Hell yeah. What First you question. Got? Were there different scripts with different killers, or was it always that original script? I think the later ones might have had different killers in uh, different versions. I never read the later ones, obviously. Bullet to the head makes it hard to read. Um, <laughs> but the, the one I initially got before I ever met with Wes was the same one we shot. So, I, I mean, we were... As far as I know, I know Matt was. Right, Matt? That's right. It's all right. Matt, I don't know. Um, uh, it, was, it was always the same. I mean, we knew, uh, you know. I've, I've heard a lot of that, though, where they didn't even let the killers know that they were the killers and blah, blah, blah. That's hard to act, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, we knew it all. Yeah, I didn't see any other versions. I, I had heard... Scream 5 had like seven different scripts even going around Hollywood just to keep people confused. So. Oh, really? I wonder. Let me make a call. <laughs> <laughs> Another question right Thank here. You. I was just wondering, like, how many, like, the scene where you and uh, Matt just started stabbing each other, how many takes did that take? Uh, I don't remember, to be honest, but there was, it was a much longer scene, um, and there were a lot more stabs, if you will, um, uh, that when the MPAA saw it, you know, we had to remove a lot of that scene. Uh, it was too violent. Uh, how many, t I don't know how many takes. I feel like we did, I don't know, four or five. Yeah, it was not, it was not a Fincher film where we had to do it 60 times. Yeah, I mean, there can be, there's so many different things going on from camera to special effects to, props even to acting obviously i mean matt's not a great actor but like <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> i'm glad to see you actually walked a little distance this time yes you yeah. oh me <laughs> yeah <laughs> i hey uh, all right all right you got another question for you talk about getting to work with wes craven who was obviously one of the modern masters of horror what was it like working with him as a director uh, it was inspirational. I mean, he, you know, I, I sort of approached it uh, as a serial killer. And, and he had, you know, uh, as much research done as I had on the mentality of that. So uh, it was really interesting. He's, you know, he's, he was such, a, such an educated guy and, like, knew everything that you could hope for. Uh, with a director to give you more knowledge and more knowledge. I always feel like it's my job to know more than anybody on the set about everything we're doing. And he, he was definitely right there with me. And uh, he was a brilliant man, a very sweet, kind, loving, uh, inspirational man. So, uh, yeah, he's one of the best. I wish he was with us. All right, we got some questions over here. Wow, you're one? all the way over there I, now. I move, I move, brother. I need my glasses. So, like you said, there were um, a lot of stabs taken out. So was Stu originally supposed to die? Were you going to kill him? Uh, in my heart, yes. <laughs> uh, in the script, no. <laughs> but I bet Billy's plan was 
to eliminate him. Absolutely. Yeah. We need to talk later. We have a question on the other side of the room now. We're here. Oh. So, hi, Skeet. Great Hello. to have you with us. Thank you. So, the question I have is, um, what was both your favorite moment and hardest part working on, like, the first screen? And um, what other movie experiences did you enjoy working on? And what lessons did you take away from both of them, including screen? Ah, wow. Um, sorry, go back. What was my favorite part of working oh, on screen? Oh, oh, both favorite part and hardest part of working on screen. Oh, man, those are usually the same thing. Um, I, you know, to me, like, I, the, the humor was hard. Like, just in the mindset I was in, like, it was hard to think of it as funny. So, but there were certain times I was the setup man for Matt's humor. And so it, it took a little while to grasp, oh, I'm leading to a punchline. I'm not, like, you know, salivating to stab this motherfucker. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, some of those took a little while to, to figure out. And um, uh, in terms of other films, I, I, I love what I do. It's the greatest job on the planet. Every day is different. Every day is exciting. Um, so, and I, I learn something every day. Every day. So I don't know. I'd scream. I couldn't pinpoint, oh, yes, I learned that. But I know everything I've done has influenced everything I'm doing now and everything to come. So I don't know. It's, it's uh, you know, I'm fortunate to be in a business and a world where people are open hearted, uh, very loving, kind. We're all coming together much like a circus to, you know, tell a story. And uh, it's a unique job. Uh, I love it. Back over to the other side. <laughs> you had more to say. What were you going to say? <laughs> I was just going with. It's like we're all we're all, we're a big family. Yeah, yeah, it is that, and and you guys are included in that. We wouldn't be doing it without all of you. Certainly, there would be no point. All right, now back over to the other side. Oh, Here. there you are. Here I am. She's got a question for you now. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, was it extremely like emotionally taxing to play such an evil, manipulative character, or was it more fun for you? Like, what was that like? I guess? Uh, it was, yeah, it was a little bit taxing. I mean, I was much younger then, so less taxing than stuff is now. But I had, you know, we were fortunate we shot in Napa Valley, California, wine country, and um, and uh, I had two rooms, uh, like, you know, like a big suite double room thing. And so I had my room I slept in with the bed, obviously. And then I had a, a whole living room that I had just come off of play in this movie called Touch, where I was the second coming of Christ in modern day LA, the sweetest, softest human being I've ever played. And within a week I had to transform into Billy so I took that second room, I went to the mall in Napa Valley, I bought black lights, black light posters, like, I mean, I was 25 or six at that time and playing a 17 year old. And so I turned it into Billy Loomis's room, his high school room. And um, I spent a lot of time in there watching movies about serial killers, reading about serial killers and that kind of, I was able to, to get into that mindset. But every, every job's taxing. It's a lot of concentration. All my family are NASCAR drivers. I'm the only one to leave NASCAR in, my, in three generations of my family being in the business. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. I was thinking last week, like, I mean, these guys have been my heroes my whole life. And... <laughs> oh, I guess I know who that is. Oh, wait, we know who that is. Please welcome. Rather you he woke Lord. up. He woke up. You'll get the next Here question. he comes. <laughs> wait, I need my drink. Thank you. <laughs> 
Oh, wow, going through all the emotions. <laughs> Matt Lillard, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to high school, Matt. All right. He Grab doesn't a, even need a mic, by the way. Got one for you right there. But it's better when I have one. I'm an Aquarius. I like long walks on the beach. I, I, you know, you, we didn't match on Bumble. It was weird. That's how rumors start. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> That's how rumors start. Hi. Sorry, I'm late. Hey, um, that's all right. Who Grab has a, a seat. I've, I'm going to stand all right, we well, got a we question. had a question we were right here. finishing. Was before. it good? It was no. great. It was, I mean, was it about me? If I, it wasn't, I, we move on. I, all right, here's the next question. I, all right, okay. take over, bro. Okay, Ski, uh, what was it like to play Kevin Mitnick in Takedown? I'm not in that movie. <laughs> I know you're not. Uh, it was daunting, to be honest. Uh, I worried if I did him any disservice that my bank accounts would disappear. <laughs> For anybody who doesn't know, Kevin Mitnick was the foremost hacker on the planet at the time. Matt was in a movie called Hackers. Back to planet! Back, back, back to Matt. <laughs> he could probably answer this too. Like, I, it's a little scary when, you, when you're representing a, a subculture or an actual person in that case that could really eliminate you uh, and eliminate all your money. Oddly, uh, many years later, uh, Donna Logue, who was in the film as well, um, great actor, uh, his kids went to school with my kids and he had actually had computer issues and called randomly a person, and Kevin Mitnick, who had gotten out of jail since we filmed the movie, was doing computer services around the area we live in. And so he actually, Worked on Donald's computer. Funny story. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we got a question right down the middle here near the back. Uh, hi. Hopefully it's from Matt. Aquarius. It's uh, actually for both of you guys. Have you guys ever had anybody show up to your house on Halloween in the mask? Uh, fortunately, my house you can't get to. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> It's just I think a he's minute. challenging all the weirdos in the room. <laughs> you can come over to my house, no problem. <laughs> I don't want to challenge anyone. His address is. No, you know what's funny is that the mask, interestingly enough, so, um, so we were on set and they didn't have a mask. They thought they had a mask, but then they lost the right to the mask. So in the first five days of shooting, every day Wes would receive a box of masks. What about this one? What about this one? What about this one? So on one of the days, up comes this scream mask. He's like, what do you guys think about this? And when, like, sort of everyone was passing around and sort of had an opinion that it was kind of cool. Like you'd never seen anything like it. And the mask was from a little company in North Carolina. So back in the 90s, they weren't necessarily as, first of all, nobody thought the Scream franchise would, they just finished doing number five. Like nobody thought it was a franchise. We were a little horror movie that nobody ever really cared about, right? That's the thing about our movie that was so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> uh, you know, because Wes had made a bunch of movies, but he hadn't made a good horror movie in a while. I can say that, right? Yeah, or you he, can say he that. Wasn't, it wasn't a po And the, the genre kind of had taken a dip. Anyways, long story, way too long. The mask shows up. This little company in North Carolina had made it, and nobody had um, acquired the rights to the mask from that company. So the week it came out, it became a huge hit. And, or not the first week, actually, it was like the third well, week. Oh, yeah, two, three weeks in, we It knew. took a while for the movie to hit, but nobody acquired the mask. So that North Carolina company still owns the rights to that mask, which, if you can imagine, is a billion dollars. So that, wow. little, com that little company is winning. so good we got a cut of that. <laughs> this is our comedy routine <laughs> of the portion. I'm the setup guy. I told you earlier. And a question on this side of the room. Oh, uh, yeah, this question is for both of you guys. Um, were really either of you in the actual Scream costume, or was it like a, like a stunt guy for each You know, we talked about this yesterday. I mean, 
99% of it was a stunt guy who, if I'm not mistaken, was even a touch taller than Matt, who's like 6'10". Um, uh, I and I didn't realize we had done actually the same scene, scene in the wardrobe just for fun. Uh, walking behind Jamie Kennedy while he's watching Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, Skeet does stuff and I want to be like him. <laughs> <laughs> Very. Well, handsome. you might have done it first. Who knew? Oh, trust me. I was like, oh, I want to do that too. <laughs> That's how all the stabbings happened. Initially, I was just supposed to stab him, and he was like, no, I want to do that, too. Stu is super gay. <laughs> and an Aquarius. Happy Pride, everyone. Happy Pride. You have all the lingo. It's like, I do. Yeah, it's, a, it's not that, that one's not that hard. I know, I know, I know. All right, another question right here. So this one's for Matt. Just Here's my little unicorn. Stand up, unicorn. Show the people what you're working with. I love his hair. Look at his hair. Is that not fire? Hell yeah. My unicorn. See the smoke? So working on movies like Scooby-Doo and other things with CGI, was it hard to work with characters that you couldn't see, or did they have humans play in the part? He couldn't see any character ever in any movie. <laughs> um, it's really hard because there's nothing there. So acting is the transference of energy between two people. So if I say I love you and somebody says I love you back, like there's energy that happens. So if you're working with a dog that's not there, that's supposedly your best friend, that's the star of the movie, it's tough. It's one thing to run from a dinosaur. I'm about to get eaten. It's another thing to be like, dude, I love you. And like you're fist fighting a, an animal that's not there. So it's, it's, it's hard. But it was super rewarding. And I liked it because... You could do anything with full commitment and full energy, and they'll receive it in animation and like match you. So it was super exciting. I found it really rewarding at the end of the day. And you don't have to work with Ski. <laughs> Ta-da! -ta. He's so handsome. It's just I'm an Aquarius. It, you can't walk on set without feeling insecure. <laughs> yeah, right. Question back on this side of the room. Always that hey guys, side of the room. Um, so the casting for the first movie was incredible. If anybody got taken out with anybody else, it, I don't think it would have worked as well as it did. Was there any time that you guys were sitting together while filming and realized, like, hey, we really have something special here for this first film? Well, I, I don't think we thought about it, to be honest. No. I mean, maybe I could be wrong, but I, I mean, I, certainly I'll only speak for myself, but you get so caught up in the telling of the story, I most times forget people will actually even see it. So, I mean, if we sat and thought, oh, however many millions of people are gonna be watching this, it'd be a bit paralyzing. So maybe it's a safety net, but I, I, no, I don't think we sat around and got, went, oh, wow, this is gonna be amazing. I mean, we loved the story, but we were really kind of an independent film, even though Miramax was making it. Uh, you know, I don't think we had any you know, idea it would be what it was. Nobody and we knew. would be talking about it 25 years later. Nobody knew. I mean, it was a, literally, it was a movie out of nowhere from a director that hadn't had a hit. And I remember being on, on the way, we shot for like three weeks the end sequence where we end up stabbing each other and all that. So we were on our way to work and we would work 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. every night. So we'd get there at like five. And I remember being in the back. We would then go home and go drink in David Arquette's room, which was the best part of the show. <laughs> You're laughing, I'm not kidding, that was the best part of the show. Yeah. Coming into the hotel, like people are going out to go do their tourist things in the day and we're half bloody and like ready and to party. And drunk. Yeah. Uh, that's a joke, I, we weren't really drunk. <laughs> it wasn't until later in the morning. Um, <laughs> But you, you, I remember being on the way to work and laying in the back of a van and thinking, somebody asked the question, well, what are you doing next? And Courtney's like, I'm going back to do Friends. And Nev's like, I've got to go do Party of Five. And I had just done a pilot. And I'm like, oh, this movie's going to do nothing. And I'm going to do this pilot. And this pilot's going to be this huge deal. And cut to the pilot never got picked up. And this movie became an overnight success. So you never know where things are going to land or lead. Like all the things you think in your life are going to lead to something incredible. I find that usually doesn't. It's the thing you don't expect to be amazing that becomes amazing. These cons, for me, was an opportunity to come out and make money in between jobs. 
And I've actually, over the last two years, have grown to love these experiences. I think that, that's very sweet. I think that the transaction between two people when you can find like a little gay kid or somebody addicted to something and hug them and hold them and try to see them for what they are, there's a power in that transaction. And so for something that was about me feeding my kids has now become a really kind of powerful thing in my life. Now he's feeding all the kids. <laughs> On the line this weekend, yes, I might. Um, but I just want to say that, and you may not hear this enough, thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting these actors. Thank you for supporting us. Your money helps a lot of people get through their lives. I mean, everyone that we, you know, it will surprise you. We, I worked three weeks on Scream. I was paid $5,000 a week. Um, $5,000 a week is great if you work every single week of the year. But when you only work for three weeks and you don't work again for seven months and the government takes half, your agent takes a quarter and your manager takes a quarter, before taxes, you're left with very little. So it's shocking. The visibility does not equal money. You think it does and it doesn't. So a lot of people here are feeding their families on what you're doing. So again, humbly, thank you on behalf of everyone out there. Thank you for what you're doing. Yeah, truly, thank you. We have time for just two more questions. All right, we got one right over here by this wall on this side. Hi, I just want to say that the iconic scene where you guys stabbed each other makes me laugh to this day. <laughs> but my question is, did Skeet mean to hit you with the phone, or was that an oh. improvised line? Clearly, I didn't. Um, no, you know, the, the, the blood we lived in, like, was so sticky. I think I was intending to just throw it, and... Which is no better. <laughs> that is not in the script. Well, I was mad. <laughs> Billy's a mad dude, but no, I was intending to throw it, and it, I didn't mean to hit him with it, but I'm glad I did. You hit me with the fun. My mom and dad are going to be so mad at me, yeah. Could you do, redo that line? Have you redone that line since? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here, let's pretend uh, that... No, no, no. <laughs> um, it's funny that uh, Rose McGowan, you actually are allowed one F-bomb in a PG-13 film. And Rose McGowan had a written line that was an F-bomb. And they took away, because there's a, an F-bomb in the front of that line. You hear me with the phone, Dick? Yeah. Um, so they took away her F-bomb and gave it to me, which I'm really happy about. <laughs> Gotta love the F-bombs. All right. One got, last question. Yeah, one last question. You guys are headed back to your table for signatures, photographs, all that stuff? Yes. Yes, so keep that in mind. If you didn't have that a chance to That was the question? No. All right. Thank, Thank you, everybody. everybody. No. That was awesome. No, 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 no. Here's your question here. I just wanted to make sure if anybody had a question they didn't have a chance to ask, they could come on and hang with you guys. Well, that's another question. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will oh, yeah. say, I, I have, I'm, my line is, I take a long time. So at the end of this day, because we're lo losing time and I'm flying home, is my daughter's 19th birthday. I have to what? do a video. I have to do a video. Yes, she is not happy that I'm here. So everyone, Aww. real quick. So you're gonna ask a question, but I'm gonna can we sing quick. happy birthday can, to can her? Can we sing happy birthday? Oh my God, you're, my daughter's gonna be so mad, bro. Uh, her name's Addison. I mean, my daughter's birthday is not till March, but um, can maybe. We just, can we log it? <laughs> um, all right, so go ahead and ask your question, and I'll do uh, this. My question is for you, Mr. Lillard. Um, obviously, it goes without This is the last saying. question. Is it a good question? Because if it's a bad question, people are going to be angry. It's not a scream question, but it's a good question. Oh. oh. So Sit it, down. Goes, it goes without <laughs> saying that SLC Punk is one of the greatest coming-of-age movies oh, of all time. You. But... Um, your directorial debut, Fat Kid Rules the World, was an incredible, also punk-themed coming-of-age movie, and you did a great job with Thank it. You. I'm wondering if you have any plans to return to feature directing. I need an agent, so you are hired. <laughs> uh, I'm on a TV show right now called Good Girls, so <laughs> thank you. I'll be directing that next year. I've been trying to get movies made since the, min since the minute that movie dropped. If I could never act again and direct the rest of my life, I would. 
Wow. So, but it turns out they only hire one. I was just about uh, to hire you for. They only hired one director and lots of actors. And right after that movie, I did a movie called The Descendants, and then my acting career kind of picked back up. So, I will be back. But thank you for saying that. Um, again, w does anyone want to ask Skeet a question? No. Okay. Great. Yeah. Good. 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 Uh, so. Oh wait! 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 Happy yeah. birthday! We gotta do the birthday thing. We do the birthday thing. Yes, oh. Um, So she's, uh, words words of, encouragement. of encouragement for the younger generation. I would say, to be honest, uh, find what you love to do, Amen. no matter what. No matter what that cost is, find what you love to do that doesn't feel like work, that you wake up every day excited to do it, and your life will be much more blissful. Amen. All right, yeah. Um, so, uh, you guys, thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking yeah, time. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you, thank so you for much. this weekend. It oh, was yeah. really, really amazing. Thanks to you guys. Um, I just, I, real quick, I just wanted to say uh, happy birthday to my daughter, Addison. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Addison. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Addison. Happy birthday. Woo, we love you. Ah, oh, yes. Though, I love you. We love you guys. Give it up. Give it up. Thank you guys. Skeet Ulrich. Matthew Thank Lillard. you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, this is Aaron Ashmore, and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe like, like now. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.